Welcome to the Fox One Corp series of training videos. I'm Dave Springford. Please visit me online at www.foxonecorp.com for all your glider supplies. In this video, I want to take a look at the PowerFlarm Fusion. This is the new device replacing the PowerFlarm Core that many of you are familiar with. At first glance, the Fusion looks very much the same as the Core. All of the uh, connections are the same. We have the same antenna connections, the RJ port, the DB9, the USB port, and most importantly for retrofit, the placement of the holes in the four tabs for mounting the Fusion box are identical to the core. So it's pretty much a direct one-to-one -one replacement. You can take the core out, you can put the Fusion in. The only difference between the core and the Fusion is the GPS antenna connection. So you'd have to replace your GPS antenna with the new antenna that comes in the box. Otherwise, all the FLARM and ADS-B antennas and all the other connectors that are in your plane can be reused. One thing you may notice on this picture is that now, instead of the one flashing LED that had different colors and different rates of flash that meant different things on the core, there are now four different LEDs. One giving us the status, one giving us the GPS, whether we're transmitting on FLARM or receiving on FLARM. So that's an improvement to allow us to get a little bit more information at first glance when we look at the instrument. The next view of the Fusion, I want to take a look a little bit more closely. First thing, over here on the right hand side, you'll notice this black sticker. This black sticker covers a slot in the metal case and behind that slot, there is the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth antenna. So that should be mounted facing the pilot to get your best Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signal back into the cockpit where your devices can use it. Working on this at home, I had the Fusion set up on my desk in the office and I was on the couch in the family room with my computer about uh, oh, 40 feet away and three, four walls away and I still had a very strong signal from the Fusion Wi-Fi. It's a good Wi-Fi radio so you should have no problems in the cockpit sitting uh, five, six feet from the, uh, from the device. So if we take a look over at all the connectors again, we can see the most important thing is that they are labeled on top. The first two connectors are your FLARM A and your FLARM B antenna ports. And if you look closely, you can see there's a little pin sticking out in the center of the FLARM A and B connections, but in the ADS-B there's not. So you cannot mix up the ADS-B and the FLARM antennas. The FLARM antennas use a reverse polarity SMA, whereas the ADS-B uses just a regular SMA. The FLARM A port is a transmit and receive port. So all the transmissions that you do come through the FLARM A port. The FLARM B port is a receive only port. So that's what you would connect a second antenna that you might put back behind the wheel well of your glider to get reception from coverage below and behind you. Whereas the FLARM A antenna should be mounted up high and forward somewhere so that you can see ahead. Other ports, as I said, there's a USB port here that we can use to uh, download files, upload configuration, but we'll also talk about the wireless configuration in a future video. Finally, you have the DB9 port. That DB9 port is a power and data port. You can power the device from this port and you can also extract the FLARM and GPS data to send to another device. The RJ port does the same as the DB9. You can provide power input through this port and you can also get FLARM and GPS signal out from this port to send to another device. With the FLARM, you'll get an accessory package and the accessory package comes in a Ziploc bag like this. The sticker on the front is going to tell you whether it's an American or a European package. We use slightly different frequencies in North America than are used in Europe. So this A at the end of the package tells you that it's a North American package. So what's in this package is the next question. So first thing, there's your USB extension cable. This is somewhere around a three quarter inch diameter threaded section. So you can cut a three quarter inch hole in your panel if you wish, push this through, and then you have this hex nut that you can screw on to hold that port inside the face of your panel. Next thing we have is we have this DB9 power cable. 
it comes pre-wired and so I've pinned this out and I'm assuming all the wires are going to come the same and on this particular one the plus 12 volt was the red wire it connects onto pin 7 in the DB9 and the ground connection was the white wire connecting to pin 5. Word to the wise, double check before you just blindly connect power following these two color codes just in case it's different. But that gives you a starting point. You can check continuity between red and pin 7 and white and pin 5 and that should give you uh, your power in. All of the pinout is provided in the manual, the installation manual. The next thing that you'll get is you'll get three antennas that look almost the same and a GPS antenna. So GPS antenna at the bottom, pretty obvious. It says right on the bottom, GPS antenna. The ADSB and FLARM antennas look very similar. As we mentioned, on the Fusion itself, the FLARM antenna has a pin. So it means on this connector, there's going to be a hole that the pin on the main unit fits into. And on the ADSB antenna, it had a hole, so there's going to be a pin on this end that fits into the hole. The other way to distinguish them is the red shrink tube on the FLARM antennas and the blue shrink tube on the ADSB antenna. And those colors match the color coding that we have on the labels right here. We have two red labels, a blue label, and a black label, and the GPS antenna just terminates in a black wire. So using the color coding, we can quickly and easily connect them to the correct ports. Finally, in that package, there's the Fusion Quick Start Guide. Fusion, as I alluded to earlier, has a Wi-Fi connection, and that Wi-Fi allows you to do all the configuration, your FLARM config file. You can do your range analysis looking at the, uh, the FLARM hub that you connect to your computer or your phone or tablet via the Wi-Fi. This is a, a huge improvement, I think. No more creating a config file on your computer, saving it to your USB, putting the USB in, powering on, all those steps that we had to go through. Now you connect to the uh, Fusion's Wi-Fi, pull up FLARM hub, and then you start to configure very much like the configuration tool on the FLARM website. So in a future video, we'll go through the FLARM hub and the connection via Wi-Fi to your FLARM Fusion so that you can do all the configuration. Hope you've learned something about your Power FLARM Fusion today. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below or send me an email. And please visit me online at www.fox1corp.com.